Hey, you guys, thanks for listening in today on the episode of Tips with T. I have Miss Jen with us. Hey, Miss Jen, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, T. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Thank you so much for being a guest on the show today. So just tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Sure thing. So my name is Jen and I run a website called Jen on a Jet Plane. I used to be an attorney and I changed to being a full-time travel blogger and writer three years ago. So it has been quite a journey for me to make that transition. And now I am an author. I have several books on Amazon and I document my travels through my website and social media channels. Awesome. Awesome. So I'm glad we get to have you on the show today to talk about travel. Um, So what tip would you give to sole female travelers at this time um, that are affordable? Sure. So I think it can be hard when you're traveling alone because you're hit with a lot of things like solo supplements. Um, It can be hard to shoulder the cost of, you know, an accommodation versus when you're splitting it with a friend. Um, And at the same time, you kind of don't want to splurge or you don't want to you don't want to splurge too much, but you also don't want to skimp so that you miss out on the opportunity and you end up only being in the place where you're not comfortable. So it's about finding a balance. I think the first thing you can do is go somewhere where you get a lot of bang for your buck. So find somewhere where the exchange rate is in your favor. This is going to vary depending on, you know, when it is that you're traveling, but find somewhere that you can go where you can get a good exchange rate and your money goes far. South America, you know, um, is usually a great place for people to start here from the U.S. if you're based in the U.S. um, because there's a favorable exchange rate there. Also, I recommend that you go somewhere for a short period of time at first. So three or four days still can be really rejuvenating. If you're taking overnight red you know, red eye flights, you can really make the most out of that, especially if you're visiting the city. Um, So you can see a lot of things in a short period of time, you know, like Mexico City would be a great long weekend getaway. And in general, um, learning how to find really cheap flights. So that has been the game changer for me, because I think when people think about traveling, they think, oh, I'd love to go somewhere like, you know, Chile or Argentina, but there's no way I could afford the flight to get there. That's a thousand dollars in and of itself. So if you sign up for things like flight alerts, or um, my favorite is Scott's cheap flights. And so I always get different deals in my inbox. And if you're doing things uh, like travel hacking, you know, taking out a credit card in an intelligent way and using that in your favor to reap that benefit, you can find that it's affordable to get almost anywhere in the world. Awesome. So I guess what advice would you give to someone, especially like me? Because like, I want to travel, but I haven't traveled by myself yet. Uh, You know, how can I get to the point where I feel comfortable traveling by myself? Um, You know, you know, what type of trips that I can plan that will maybe not be so overwhelming for a female that's traveling solo? Absolutely. And it depends on you and your comfort level. So if you're somebody who still really wants to be in a group setting, know that you can travel alone, but kind of take yourself on these day trips or tours where once you get somewhere, let's say you're going to meet up a group to do a city walking tour. So you feel like you're with people there or a pub crawl at night. So you're going out at night, but you have other of you know people that are sitting there waiting for you they they're with you the whole time people are expecting you to be somewhere so it adds an element of safety to it you can also pop on the different group trips with other solo female travelers there are different groups on facebook um the solo female travel group i think is one of them specifically that my friends run uh, and they are constantly hosting group trips or you yourself um can just become a little bit more excited about the notion of spending time with yourself. And I know that it can be intimidating at first, but things like having a meal on your own when you're in a foreign place and you have the ability to take in the Wi-Fi and catch up, you know, with everything that you've been missing for the day and really order everything you want without worrying about who's eating as well at the table, right? It can be kind of freeing and relaxing and wonderful. And if you start to look at it with more anticipation, like excited anticipation instead of dread, it can really change your perspective and make you start to crave that solo time and that solo travel experience. Awesome. I'm glad you said that. Because like with me, I am, I love to travel. However, sometimes, you know, people schedule conflict. Um, People might not have the same interests as you. So um, trying to figure out a way to get out of that shell so I can be like, okay, well, what are some things 
and maybe writing a list of down of what are some things that I'm willing to try and do by myself as far as traveling different places. Cause you know, um, you, it's, it's sad because you like you want to go with all these different people, but sometimes that might not be the option for everyone. Some people do travel alone because they can't find people that's willing to travel with them. Absolutely. It just becomes unrealistic some points, you know, when you're trying to coordinate a big group of people um, around something that's not like a wedding, right? That it's just a regular vacation because people opt out. People don't submit their deposits in time. People don't have the vacation time all of a sudden. Um, So it can be really tough. And your options are to sit there and wait for it to magically work out one of these days or to decide, you know, I really want to go on this experience. I really want to have this experience. And I don't need to feel alone because I will meet people along the way it actually becomes it's a little bit of a paradox but when you're by yourself you end up meeting more people because you don't have those like people that you know as a security blanket as a buffer that you can talk to in your language and that you can kind of feel safe around so because of that you're vulnerable but you're also more open to meeting people that cross your path from all different reasons and I've had that lead to days that have been completely unexpected where I've had you know a random person that took a photo of me you know take me to coffee and tell me Greek legends from the island of Greece that they were in, you know, and they just so many different cool experiences that you wouldn't necessarily be open to if you're with somebody. So again, that shift in perspective, instead of being nervous, um, just being excited and and looking forward to what the day holds, because you really never know. Um, And it can be a beautiful thing and a great experience after the fact. There's a reason why so many people advocate for solo travel. Awesome. So what was your first solo travel trip that you took? So my first big solo trip by myself was uh, in law school. I moved to Australia for six weeks Mm -hmm. and I don't think I really quite realized like what was happening. Like, I think I understood like across the world in theory, but not necessarily in concept, what that means, like in practice when you're there and everybody's on a different time zone than you and nobody's close by and you're just dropped in a whole different atmosphere. Um, And I guess I also maybe thought like a professor or somebody would be becoming like an adult supervisor. Um, But nope, they just trusted me to go on my own. And I remember being like, I am completely unprepared for this. Um, (laughs) I had to learn everything about living abroad. Sydney is a very developed place. It's very much like New York City, right? It has a lot of hustle, bustle, um, a lot of buildings, a lot of things happening. Um, So it was a lot to take in. And I realized at first how nervous I was about things. Like every time I had to get dinner by myself, the first time I went to a club by myself, right? Cause I was like, I'm, I want to say I went out in Sydney and like, I don't just want to sit here tonight. Like it's a Friday and I'm just sitting here, just like looking at the ceiling. I'm going for it. Um, but it was so nerve wracking when I was on the way there. And so it was learning how to tackle those fears, meeting people along the way. I, you know, by the end of my six weeks there, I had a going away party where all of my new friends were there to like send me off. And I was like, somehow I managed to go from just me, the person to me having all these friends here. Um, and I think it's just, it was really encouraging for me and, and it sparked that love of solo travel. Awesome. So we're going to pivot a little bit. So what are some ways that you were able to make um, passive income during this pandemic? Sure. So I think passive income is something everybody should be looking at just because it's so nice to have money come to you from something that you've invested time into once and then just keeps paying you over and over again. Mm -hmm. So some of my different passive income streams include my books that I've written on Amazon. So I have five books and I'm currently in the process of writing my sixth. All five are number one Amazon bestsellers. Um, My blog is something that I have taken a lot of time to write and research articles and make them, you know, SEO friendly so that they show up on the first page of Google and drive traffic. Um, So that makes me passive income every month through ads. I'm part of an ad network called Mediavine and they are amazing. So those two are my big revenue earners from the blog that are passive. Uh, I'm also currently working on a self-publishing course. Uh, So I would like to just build on different topics that I've already talked about and been featured in in different uh, outlets and build that into a higher funnel offering because things like Uh, coaching or social media management are more active and I'd like to step away from that yeah 
Um, and that's a, that's another thing too. Like I tell people to have like multiple streams of income and passive income is always great because that's um, income that's residual income that's gone, always can work for you. But once you set it up, it's there. It's always going to be generating money. Um, so um, with the book, how can you self-publish a book and then not be as expensive? Because, you know, um, I feel like writing a book is a great way to get passive income, but, you know, publishing and all that other good stuff can be very expensive. So how was that process for you? It doesn't have to be expensive if you kind of avoid all of the noise and the people that tell you that you have to pay into a publishing company or anything of the sort. You can do it yourself, but you have to be the kind of person that's organized enough to learn to do it yourself. Mm -hmm. The process is very user friendly. Amazon wants as many books as possible on its store because it wants to have book sales, right? So more books means more book sales. So they want to make it easy for you to become an author. You really do not need much. So you have your manuscript, whatever it is that you have written, and that can be written in a Microsoft Word document and a Google document. It doesn't have to be written on any prepaid format. From there, you would like it to ideally be formatted. There's now a free Kindle Create um, program that allows you to format that for free so you don't have to pay for anybody to do that. You maybe want to pay for somebody to edit but if you have friends that are part of your launch team that are reading it before the fact, you can get them to send you your edits, you know, and have other people read it over several times and save money that way on editing as well. Um, and then from there, your book cover. Your book cover is the one thing I do recommend that you splurge on because people will buy a book depending on the cover. Um, they just won't stop to look about anything in the book if the cover is not compelling. So it, that's the one thing where it's really worth your investment. And I like to go with 99 designs because for as little as $200, you can get started on an ebook cover design and you'll have like 30 or so different designs sent to you that you can pick from, you can tailor, you can really make sure that you like them um, versus going on something like Fiverr where you have to describe to the T what you want, cross your fingers, and it usually still doesn't come out how you want it. Um, so I just prefer the process better of leaving it up to designers and having them submit different ideas to me. And I found that that's the best way to do so on a budget. So, cause you can start for as little as $200. So but I would say all of that together for under $500, you can self publish a book um, for maybe even less than that. Like, let's say we cut all costs and we do very minimal promotion and you try to do as many things for free as possible, like $300 or so, and you could have a book. Um, so it can be done definitely on a budget and I wouldn't let anything deter you because you can always perfect and get better the more books you write. Awesome. Awesome. I'm glad you said that because I was interested in doing a book as well. Um, my God, but that keeps riding me about writing a book because <laughs> I, uh, I had so many experiences, but that was one of my hangups. I was like, oh, uh, it can be expensive writing a book. But now it's good to know that there's other inexpensive ways to actually get what you need to get done. If you are hiring an illustrator, that is a different charge. So that's something where you have to see, you know, what you can get that done for. Um, and that could be a little bit more costly. But otherwise, with print on demand, you don't have to buy all these books ahead of time. Amazon prints them out one at a time as they're ordered. And that has really changed the game for self-published authors. Awesome. Awesome. So thank you so much, Ms. Jen, for being on the show today. Uh, we are going to share your social media handle so you can tell our listeners, how they can get in touch with you if they would like to render your services or reach out to you. Absolutely. I'm available on TikTok, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, Facebook, all the socials under at Jen on a jet plane. You can also find my books on Amazon uh, and you can look directly on my blog, Jen on the jet plane.com. Awesome. And if you guys want to get in contact with me, you can do so. Um, bye calling me if you would like my number is 910-317-0396 you can shoot me an email at contact at mjfinancial.biz you can schedule an appointment on the website at www.mjfinancial.biz and you can find this episode on anchor you guys and you can find the playback for the video on the youtube channel for mj financial management so thank you once again miss jen for being a guest on the show i highly appreciate you thank you t likewise it's been a pleasure and all right, you guys, we will see you on the next episode of Tips with Tea.